and roll. What's up, everybody? Hey, this is John Kitchens, and this is episode 51 of Expert Mentors Live. I'm super excited for today's episode. We've got GoGo on, and we're going to let her introduce herself here in a second, and uh, then we're going to walk through how to double your business with the power of social media, answer some uh, questions. So make sure you guys use the Q&A, the chat, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely get you guys squared away and answer everything. And um, I'm sure we'll cover other things as well. So go, 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 say hello to the Honey Badger Nation and uh, let them know what you're about. Hey guys, well, thank you for having me today. I am so excited to be part of the, the Honey Badgers. I did a little bit of research before I joined the Madness at EXP. And, and of course I wanted to be surrounded with people that are smarter than me, because you know how that works. You're the average of those five people that you surround yourself Absolutely. with. And if you're the smartest one in the room, you're in the wrong room. So I needed to uh, change my room. <laughs> and uh, I like Honey Badgers. It's a it's a large group of people. Any question you have, anything starting from social media or, you know, how to build a team or how to build one nationwide. I mean, you can talk to anybody and everybody's willing to have because we all benefit from each other's success. So yep. uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for making the time. And um, yeah, you, you know, the, the Honey Badger Nation is, is strong and um, it is getting stronger. And that's one of the cool things, right? It's a great giving um, community um, that really, you know, it really resonates with us because that's what, that's what we're about. We're about as, you know, adding as much value as possible. Um, that's really, you know, we love to, to innovate. And if you get down to the core of it, this just, just adding more value is all innovation really is. And, um, you know, that's where expert mentors, you know, really sparked from, or, you know, like I said, this is, we've been at it a year. This is episode 51 and um, we've had some amazing, we've got, we, we have amazing people um, in the Honey Badger Nation that just love to add value and give back. And, Today's no different. So, you know, without further ado, I'm going to let you dive in. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, folks are still jumping on. Definitely a hot topic that uh, that's definitely on everybody's mind. They're trying to how to maximize and figure out and, and conquer social media. And, um, you know, you've, you're definitely a great uh, role model for them to, to glean off of and, and uh, model some of the key things that you've been up to. So I'm going to let you run with it. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Do I get to see the questions and stuff like that? Cause I, always I um, no, I'll, I'll shout them out to you when we, uh, when, when okay. we get them posted. So for you guys just jumping on, if you've got questions as we go through, throw it in the Q and a or throw it in the chat and we'll get, uh, we'll get you guys squared away. Yeah. Cause I want to, you know, social media comes so easy to me. That's the, I don't want to say that's the only thing I know how to run business, but that is how I run business. Uh, so I just want to make sure that I cover everything just because something may come so natural to me and I don't even, it doesn't even come to you to mention it just because I, I totally understand it. Just make sure that you guys ask the right, you know, ask the questions yeah, that, absolutely. Um, that so I can make sure I cover everything. Yeah. So that's a great, know, that's a great point. Um, for you guys listening in, never just assume, right? So if you've got a question, be inquisitive, ask, get clear. No, no, no matter how basic or, you know, you, you may think it's that, you know, it's a, it's a startup question, but because I've been doing this for seven years, things come so natural to me. And even Christy says sometimes, Christy's my right hand woman, as we, as we call her. <laughs> oh, she's awesome. But she even reminds me sometimes, like, Gogo, you don't even realize how much you know about social media and how hungry the agents are out there for information because it comes easy to me. So I just want to make Make sure that I cover everything. So my name is Junvir Batki. I was born originally. Uh, I'm originally from Transylvania. I'm Hungarian by nationality. And so when I got here and I decided um, to become a realtor, clear, clearly Junvir is not a name that you can run business under in the U.S. <laughs> so uh, I had to, uh, everybody called me Gogo because my email, I came as an au pair just to back it up. And then my host parents couldn't say Junvir or Juju, how my email is G-Y-O-G-Y-O. -G -Y -O. So they asked me, they're like, Would, can we call you Gogo? And so that's how the whole Gogo thing started. And then I bought Corporate America for a while. And of course you can answer a 1-800 phone number with the, hi, my name is Gogo, how can I help you today? Uh, it's the wrong 1-800 number. So <laughs> in, in Corporate America, everybody called me Gwen. And I'm just, I'm not a Gwen. Like, no offense to all the Gwens out there. I don't resonate with Gwen. I don't feel like a Gwen. So when I decided to be a realtor, I figured, I'm like, can I just go by the name of Gogo? Like, that's me. That's my personality. I feel like a Gogo. I'm a Gogo. So I reached out to my friends and I said, hey, if you saw a yard sign with my real name, Yunvir, or you saw a right yard sign with Guan or one with Gogo, would you go with Gogo? And, and pretty much everybody research came back then. Yeah, just go with Gogo, you're Gogo. So 
I stuck with it. I started, um, I got my license in 2011 and I started GoGo's Real Estate on Facebook at the time. The reason why I started it is because truly, I went into a local office. I used to be with Real Estate One and the agents in the office were in business longer than I've been alive. And um, we are talking, you know, thousands of dollars in marketing budget. And I came in <laughs> not having a penny to my name, not having a sphere of influence because I'm not from here. You know, I don't have the college friends. I don't have the cousins that's going to buy a house from me. And so I needed to reach something, a way where I can market myself and create a brand for myself, but with zero dollar. And that's how social media came about. So for the longest time, I only did everything on Facebook. And um, just so you guys understand, 100% of my business comes from social media or sphere of influence. And even what I call sphere of influence, I think even those people that personally know me call me because they see that I constantly post, then I constantly work. Then there's not one day that they don't see something from Gogo's Real Estate posted. Um, so truly, I think I can, I can say that social media is 100% of my bread and butter. I refer a lot out. When I refer my leads out, I don't keep the volume in a transaction. I give that to the agent. So you're not going to see that in my personal production. What you see under my, or if anybody looks me up, what they see under my license uh, ID or the transaction that I personally worked on. I don't want the liability. Um, I don't need the pat on the back. So when I give leads away, I truly give them away. Like I don't, it's not going to be, the, con the transaction is not ran under Google's real estate. It's run right. under my agent and they pay me a referral fee. Um, so I, you know, I like to do it that way. I don't want personally to do any more than my personal max is 10 to 12 million. I can't do any more than that without my life suffering. So I'm a mom. I'm 37. I have two boys. They are nine and 11. And um, I drop them off every morning. I pick them up every afternoon. I'm there for every game they have. We travel a lot. We are pretty much gone once a month. We are going to Chicago this weekend. Um, so for me, I'm in it, of course, to make great money, but I'm in it to make it smart where I'm not exchanging time, my personal time for money. So that was one of the reasons yeah, why I joined EXP is because it allows us to do it in multiple ways, um, of, you know, making income in multiple ways. So social media came about about two years ago. I finally realized, you know, I, I have Instagram too. Like, why don't I work that? I have LinkedIn. Why don't I work that? So truly, I run business on the three platforms, on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Um, there's two are similar. One is one kind of a sore thumb kind of sticks out, and that's Instagram. Because on Instagram, you can share a link. Where on Facebook and LinkedIn, you can. And I love Kiwi Corp. So I <laughs> generate so many leads on KV Core or with the power of KV Core and I can't even tell you guys. And it blows my mind every time when I see people of like not sharing their own KV Core website. Like that is your Zillow. That, with that, if, with that um, system, you can become your own Zillow. You own your own information. So every Monday, this is kind of a tip um, for everybody out there. I have a virtual assistant now um, that she posts everything. I used to do all my posts. So everything you see on Instagram or anything that's personal, all the blah, 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 then I type up. I type up. I do all that. I respond to every single message. I do all that myself. But the actual link from KV Core that we co post on Facebook and, and Insta uh, Facebook and LinkedIn are done by my uh, virtual assistant. So every Monday, we post my listing. That listing comes from KV Core. That's my direct link that um, EXP gives us, which in return, then anybody clicking yet, going to put that lead back right into my KV Core CRM program. All we need to do is follow up, which we already have the automated drip campaigns. And then with the touch of the virtual assistant, um, we also have the human touch that like, hey, I saw that you're browsing my site. Do you have any real estate need? Yada, yada. And then also based on location where those leads are coming in from, um, we are feeding those out to the agents through KV Core. And it's so simple. Like right in there, I have now 40-ish, um, 42, 43 agents in the system all signed up. So I like to support my team. So pretty much when those leads come in, we'll just feed it right to them through KV Core. Just say, hey, Beth is in. Livingston County, give one this one to Bath. Laura is in Novi, Kim is in Commerce. So it's just wherever the leads are coming in from or which area they're uh, interested in, we just assign them to those agents and then they get it in KV Core and they follow up from there. They also, I don't do open houses. I don't do door knocking. I don't cold call. I've never cold called in my life. I can't, I just, can I say freaking? Cause that's. <laughs> hey, you say whatever, you say whatever the hell you want to say on this show. <laughs> I guess in the weedy GVs, I also can't ask for business. So if you ever meet me somewhere in an event and 
strangers asking me what I do for a living, I, I'm just like, I'm a realtor. And yeah. end of story. <laughs> I love it. So I got, a, I got a question for you. So um, when, you know, in the, in the beginning, you know, when you, when you started out with, with Real Estate One, I mean, did you, did you start with a blank sheet of paper and it's like, this is how I'm going to do my business. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I mean, I mean, I how the first time I had a coach and she was like, okay, so what's the goal for the year? Huh? No. She's like, okay, how many transactions did you have last year? I'm like, um, I don't know. How many listing sites? How many buy sites? Like I don't run business as a plan. I don't plan my social media out like how some people do it. I'm not a planner. I'm a follow your God, do it in this moment because it feels right kind of person. So no, it was not a plan. It happened to, <laughs> to work out. Right. Uh, but, it, but I was consistent at it, to be honest with you. But um, I was consistent at it because I had the time, because I knew how to do it. It's maybe a generational thing as well. Um, and also is because that was the only thing I did. You know, I mean, I never, I did for a while some mailers because I, I did it um, that before sure. last year came up with the, you can't do it with lenders and title companies and all that. Um, so I did that prior to that, but I don't do anything else anymore. It's just truly every day, grab your phone. This is my office. This is, this is, how, oh, I have a lot Absolutely. of <laughs> this, <laughs> how I, this is how I run business. Um, and that's where most people like, how do you have time for that? I mean, does any of us here out of the 1400 agents that we have here, does any of us leave the house without a cell phone? No. Some of us has two cell phones, one for business, one for personal, two for business, <laughs> one for personal. You know, I mean, it's like none of us ever leaves the house. And so you just have to get into the habit of taking photos. You have to get into the habit of being okay and being on camera. We are not perfect. And I think that's where most people go wrong. Well, two things that they go uh, wrong that I see on many agents' profile. You post the next listing, you post your last closing, but you're never in the photos. And that's a huge mistake because you are your brand. I can't emphasize Amen. Amen. The house will sell itself no matter which agent listed it, no offense, but anybody can sell a house. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's how you sell it, how you market it, how fast you're going to sell it, how you negotiate it, how your seller feels at the end of the transaction. Now that's different. But any agent can put a house in the MLS and take a photo of it and make, you know, a little blah, blah, blah. The, the, the problem that most miss is that you don't realize that you are your brand. You are the one why people want to work with you. They want to work with you because they want to work with you, not necessarily because you are with Remax or EXP or, you know, Coldwell Banker agent. It really, do I don't want to say that it doesn't matter, but it really, in the end of the day, my clients could care less of who my broker is. Sure. Absolutely. They don't, the consumer doesn't care. So, Nobody so. Nobody understand how it really works. We care. Yeah, yeah. We understand how the system works, but they don't. Right. So when you started out, so, so 2011, so just, just a little math. I mean, you've got the boys, they're, they're babies. Um, so you're still, so, I mean, that was, that was intentional on you. It was like, Hey, you know, I'm taking care yes. of, of, of so the I got invited after the crash. So everybody yep. was like, you're crazy. Like you, you seriously think you're going to make money in real estate. And I, in my mind, I was like, okay, if I can figure out how to do business with short sales and foreclosures, then by the time the good times come around, a, I will know how to do that. I will have experience and time. So that was my plan, nor did I want to do it full time at the time. So I knew I'm not coming in like gung ho of like, I'm going to be a realtor and make a hundred thousand dollars this year. To be honest with you, I made $16,000 in my first year, 37 in the second and 70 something in the third. And then it just went on from that. From, from yeah. So yeah. Did, when you started out in 2011, did you immediately, you know, start doing things on, on Facebook? When, yes. when did you start yeah. jumping in? So I, started, I started Facebook page right away. Um, I also started my Instagram page right away, but I did not work Instagram at all until about two years ago. The account existed. And I think that's the very important part for everybody sit down and figure out what your name is. And that name must be the same on every platform. Consistency. You yeah, you can be the hometown realtor on Facebook and John Kitchens on LinkedIn and um, Best in Town on the third. Right. I mean, you just can't. Whatever your brand is, you have to have that everywhere. So I am Gogo's real estate everywhere besides 
LinkedIn, because on LinkedIn, I have to have my name. So on LinkedIn, I'm Gogo Vatke. But even on LinkedIn, when you look at my profile, Gogo's Real Estate is listed for at least a million times. And I also have EXP brokered by EXP everywhere because we have to in Michigan. And I am proud <laughs> of being <laughs> EXP. So I'm not hiding, um, hiding the fact. So little, um, I travel now and teach a social media class that's called How to Double Your Business with the Power of Social Media. So I took a couple of notes. So I'm going to cheat just to make sure that I cover everything here. I don't it's have my presentation up up and running but um just so i make sure that i cover everything so there's 3.2 billion people on social media with a b now john tell me if you know anybody who doesn't need a roof above their head no everybody. No. nobody so yes. i have to rent they might not be buying or selling but everybody has to live somewhere so <laughs> i'll look at that 3.2 billion is my potential customer and i think where some people go wrong is that they limit themselves to location well i'm a realtor in michigan well that doesn't mean i can't sell in kentucky or i can sell in italy or i can sell in something so your connection is what it's worth something and that's where the influencer word comes in on social media is because i get to get into relationships or meet people through the power of social media then in return they think of like oh my gosh i wish you could be my realtor but we're in north carolina and i'm gonna be like well i personally can't be your realtor but i know exactly who would be a local rockstar and i can make the recommendation and then i do and then you make 25 percent, which again that money you didn't necessarily work for you were more of a matchmaker and so don't limit yourself don't think when you're making your posts on social media that i need to sell a house in brighton michigan you think i'm social media and i'm a realtor and just like a surgeon if you can do surgery on somebody in michigan the same doctor could probably do the surgery in africa so it right. really doesn't matter i'm not going to be negotiating the transaction i'm not going to be marketing that home i might help and market it especially if I made the referral when the agent that's local yep. it has the listing ready. And I say, Hey, shoot me some photos and I market it for you just to help them because I can do that from here, but I'm not going to be doing the actual transaction. So just don't limit yourself for location. Think big because once the realtor, always the realtor, <laughs> make that connection and make a 25% referral fee. So I love that. Yourself. And yeah. it's a um, mind. I mean, mindset's everything, right? So, I mean, you just like, just, just take the blinders off and, and really what it could be. Yeah. Everybody is a potential customer. That's how I look at it. Um, the 13 million or 13% uh, on from last year. So that 32 billion is up 13% since last year. So we are talking about 330 million people, 300 million people more on social media than the year before. I mean, even my grandma has a Facebook account. You know what I mean? I think my dad is the only one person. He's the only person. I know two people. I know two people. Two people that are not on social media. One is my dad, and the other is uh, one of my best friends uh, from from high school. And uh, I just met somebody who didn't have an email address. <laughs> I was like, no, seriously, I was like, oh, right? You don't have social Sorry. media, but you don't have an email. How do you even log in to your bank account? True. You know what I mean? Like basic things. Like how? I it blew my mind. I was like, <laughs> so I had to drive the docs to you. Are you going to drive to the office every day, like for an initial? Yeah. Not, like, I understand you fighting the idea of technology, but you, you better get on board, honey, because this is, this is not going anywhere. Uh -uh. It's nope. only going to get worse in, 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 the, in that case, uh, in that case scenario. So anyway, up 13%, and they're estimating that $17 billion are going to be spent this year with a B on some sort of a social media advertising. So my goal is to teach everyone how not to take now how not to partake in that seventeen billion dollar advertising cost. I do everything at hundred percent free. Once in a blue moon, I I'll throw ten bucks at a at a boosted post or I'll create an ad here and there. But if you look at my account, most of the time I do not have ads running. Um, now I'm not saying you can do that. You probably get to and pass me um, if you are doing it with money, but. I, I don't know why I'm kind of just, I stand for, I don't want to spend money on advertising if there's a way to do it for free. Love it. So that's, that's, my, yep. yeah, mm -hmm. that's one of my, uh, my goals. And so it is free advertising unless you want to spend money on it, which you can. Um, and I guess the biggest question is many people have is, should I have a page or should I run business on my personal? So I separate the two for many reasons. I run business on the business page and I do personal on my personal is because I don't know if you ever taken a disc assessment. 
<laughs> to realize who you are as a person. Have you taken one, John? Um, several, uh, all the different kinds. <laughs> Self awareness. I'm, I'm just fascinated. Try to try to exactly. crack the code and figure out who the who, who I am. I'm a totally different person in my personal life than I am in business. I'm in business. I'm a total little asshole. I'll be honest with you. Excuse for my French. Um, I am not detail oriented. I am very high D and very high I. It's my way or the highway. Um, I never had a file when I got to a closing table until I hired Christy. I didn't know I was not organized until I hired Christy. Um, because you don't know what you don't know until you're facing one. You're like, oh my gosh, there's a pretty file and there's like stickers on it and everything's in my calendar and my ducks are in a row. <laughs> You know what I mean? So it's just, it's just different. But with social media, I don't want to shove down on my friend's throat that I'm a realtor. You know what I mean? I want them to yep. choose to follow me in my career. And I also don't want my clients necessarily know that I am poolside with a mimosa today and getting business done on my cell phone, which even though I do now because I pretty much almost every step of my day now is on Instagram, but I feel like now I'm at a point where I don't really care. You know what I mean? Of what they might think as long as things are getting done, which I'm not doing all the steps of the process anymore all by myself. You know what I mean? Christy's taking right. care of people work now, like that kind of stuff. So I know even though I'm poolside with the mimosa, their file is still being taken care of and we're getting to the closing table. But initially when, when I got started out and I was the marketer and I was the babysitter and I was the everything, I didn't want my clients to know that if we went on vacation that I just listed your house and now I'm out of town. That's why I can't do the open right. house. You know right. I mean? um, so I separate the two. I have personal Facebook and business Facebook. I have personal Instagram and business Instagram. And of course, you can market to your people um, because you want them to come over because that is your base. But I don't want you to shove it down on their throat every step of the real estate process because people in average are on the market every seven days for about six months, uh, seven years, sorry, for about six months. So I don't want to shove down the real estate thing down on their throat. And I also don't want to bore them with the next house that just came on the market. So it's a choice for them to follow you. So I think it's important to separate the two. Also, if you only have a personal, you can't advertise, which means you can only reach the people that wants to be your friend. Right. You know, 100%. I mean, strangers, but, and you're also limited, I think at 5,000. Um, so you won't be able to have more friends or followers than 5,000. So I think right. you could definitely separate the two. And then you can also with advertising, if you want to throw 20 bucks at it every month and advertise Google real estate or your business, then you can target people that, uh, you know, they're out there, but you wouldn't have another way of reaching them. You know what I mean? Got it. Yep. Um, For sure. So when I look at people's profiles, so it, it, for example, Instagram, I think everybody must have the best photo they have ever taken as their profile photo. I don't care if you put it through 17 apps and I don't care if it was 10 years ago, if you still somewhat look like that person and that's the best photo you ever taken, that should be your photo on your profile, not blurry. I don't want to see up in your nostrils. I don't want a goofy photo. If you're taking your career seriously, then I want a serious, awesome photo of you. Put it through some apps, make it absolutely the best photo you've ever taken, and then plaster that everywhere. So if you look at Gogo's Real Estate, if you Google me, or if you go on Google My Business, or you go on Facebook, or LinkedIn, or Instagram, or my website, or wherever you go, you're going to see the same blonde lady in the red dress in every single site. The reason why I do that is many. A, you want face recognition. You are your brand. Again, I'm emphasizing you are your brand until they get it. Um, and you just want to have that photo everywhere until everybody knows who you are or until you don't look like that person anymore or until you're taking another photo that's better than yeah. the one you had up. Yep. Exactly. But if you're changing that, then you're changing it on every platform. So you can't have one photo for Instagram, a totally different photo for Facebook and a third one on LinkedIn. You want the same. So then you have a unison business because you are your brand. Um, so the photos, please use apps. That's why they created them. That's why there is Botox out there. And that's why there is editing apps. I'm not saying go get Botox. What I'm saying, don't have eye bags in your photo. Don't look tired. Uh -huh. Don't look annoyed. Um, you know, things like that. You want to look the best that you can possibly. People want to do business with happy people and if you kind of look crabby and you have eye bags and you haven't slept and you live on caffeine then that's not your best photo so change it 
put it through an app that removes it. I mean, if you look at my photos, most of the time, you're not going to see craw, craw feet or what these things called. You're not going to see eye bags. My face is usually nice and smooth. And yes, I have a good face, but in real life, I don't look that good. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you don't make them catch, if, catch their eyes, they're not even going to take the time to look at the actual photo or, or, or read what you posted about. Right. Sure. Um, so a few things on your profile besides the photo. When I look at someone's profile on Instagram, for example, I want to be able to tell who you are. What's your name? Of course. I wanted to be able to tell what you do for a living. And I want to, most importantly, there most of realtors don't do it, where you do it. So mine says I'm a Michigan realtor because, of course, if there is a chance and I can get local business, I want that local business. So if I'm Googling Michigan realtors, I want to pop up. So then you're going to hashtag Michigan realtor or you're going to hashtag realtor in Michigan or however order you want to do it. But you want to emphasize of where you're doing what you do. And most importantly, how can I get a hold of you? Most of them don't have an email address, don't have a phone number. You almost make it impossible for that person to be able to get a hold of you. Yeah, that's frustrating, right? I mean, we're just we're so fast these days. Like, you yeah. know, you're trying to get a hold of someone, you can't find a number. So you just get, there. Yeah, I just don't push it. I just get frustrated and go, go find somebody else, right? Yeah. So 100% um, on that, make it easy for them to get a hold of you. Yeah, so when you look at your own profile, answer these four questions who you are, what you do, where you do it, and how can I get a hold of you? Love it. Yes. When I look at your profile, I can't answer those questions. Your profile is useless. So make sure that you go on there and make those changes. You guys can go on Google's Real Estate and kind of see mine. You can also hashtag Realtors, so you can show up in the hashtags. Um, that's very, very important. Um, the reason why I like pages are insights. I'm kind of a nerd at heart. I love numbers. Um, I speak three languages. So with numbers, I don't have to translate. There's a three second delay when I think. I think in Hungarian, then I say it out in English. But when I look at numbers, I don't have to translate those. They make perfect sense right away as soon as I look at it. So with insights, when you have a page, Instagram, Facebook will give you your insight, which means you get to see the, the backside of your business. You get to see who visits your site how often, which posts they actually spend time on, which you want to know, you want to do more of that. Uh, you want to see if they're man or woman, what's the average age, where are they from, why do you want to know that? You want to know all that because if you do decide to spend marketing dollars, then you don't want to throw it at the wind. You want to look at the insights on your profile and be like, okay, my average age of my followers is between 35 and 45. So I know I'm targeting that age group because that's the best ROI on my, on my dollars that I'm going to spend. I know that most of them are women. So I'm going to target women more than likely. And also in real estate, who makes the decision? No. Female. <laughs> no offense. Woman. Woman. It's not that 100%. Woman. I'm just going to cut the check most of the time. <laughs> and the wife is the one who's going to make the decision of which house they are buying. Um, so that's your best advertising dollars are spent on women. You want the woman to like you. Um, and then also it's like what time of the day is the traffic? You know what I mean? Most of the time you realize people are on their phone between like two and six o'clock in the afternoon, um, that kind of stuff. So if you want to, if you're running short ads or if you wanted to target, you know, certain locations or age groups or something, you can, and you know who follows you when you have your insights. So I love, I love my insights, especially I love saying that I got to reach 250,000 people this month. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, you know, I mean, there's some vanity numbers in there, but for the, for, for the most part, it gives you, like you said, that insight, which I, I'm still, you know, like your whole business is lifestyle by design, right? You design it with the kids and, and when you have the data and the insights, it helps you structure that day even more, right? Like if you know two to four, guess what I would be doing from two to four, engaging with my clients, sitting by the pool, drinking mimosas at two to four every day engaging with my clients because that's when that's where they're at that's where they're engaging and um when you have that insight you can structure that day even more so i i mean i love that that's a great uh, that's a great little takeaway well, I, that's why one of the biggest reasons why you have a page two reasons the insights and the advertising options so you can reach strangers that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise also i now have what's called a swipe up um you have to have ten thousand followers for that but yep. that's a great feature 
So on Instagram, when you're creating a story, and a story will allow you to swipe up, meaning that let's say I post about this couch that I found, like this deck furniture that I found on Amazon, then I think it's a steal. So then I can take my own Amazon link, take a photo of the product, post it on there, do a swipe up for everybody to take a look at. So if they're interested, all they need to do is swipe up, click that link. And which again now takes me of there's so many ways how you can make money. So I don't now I, I can say proudly then I have 12 different ways of income. Um, so I have like an Amazon store. When you become an influencer and you have thousands and thousands of people following you, these companies will reach out to you because you have a reach. You can reach tens of thousands of people. And then so if I if you guys ever see me do an Amazon um, swipe up and I list the product of something i will eventually make anywhere between two to ten percent of that product sales for everybody who followed that and used that link so there's another way for you to make money and it's still real estate related because i just talked about deck furniture or if i got a new printer i tell about how much i love my new printer and then i link that and every time they use it get a percentage of that sale so there's like many different ways of how you can do it but the swipe up feature you'll only get when you have at least ten thousand followers Gotcha. So then you can literally include a link. So let's say you have the newest listing. Let's say you created a cute little video about your newest listing. You post that into your, your story and then you do a swipe up feature that actually takes you to the listing, which is your KV core link, wink, wink, which means you keep everybody who click that their information within 24 hours is in your database. And all you need to do is follow up. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. So that's a swipe up. Um, Instagram though, the one you kind of have to spend some time on these platforms to figure out how they work. LinkedIn and Facebook allows you to post a direct link. Instagram does not. So you cannot put a photo of your property on Instagram and then underneath do the HTTP double dots, da, 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 www dot your website.com. You can't do that on Instagram. So what you need to do, there is one link in your bio that allows you to post the link. The catch is it allows you to post a link. You don't want one link. We want many links because you have many, many, many things that you work on. So write this down, linktree.com. L-I-N-K-T-R-E-E. -E. I just can't say the, the T's and the T-H's. And um, so you need to create a Linktree account and then you can link all your links, any website that you work on, um, anything that you work on, your calendar that, that I got the idea from Jay. Um, I ended up using Calendly, but the whole idea of having a calendar and people access to your calendar without having to go back and forth, back and forth, who's available when, um, that's on there. My GoGo's Bootcamp is on there. My personal website is on there. How to get a real estate license, school is on there. I mean, you name it, anything that I work on, a link is in my link tree. So on Instagram in your bio, you just post that one link from Linktree and when they click it, it's gonna take them to all the other websites and all the other things that you do. So all I need to do when somebody's like, hey, I wanna get my real estate license, I can like, perfect. There's a link in my bio, click that, it's gonna take you to it and it's named properly. Or let's say they want a CRM program, what I recommend. I said, go to my bio, click CRM program, takes you right there. So it's, it's, it's very useful. So make sure you create one so you can have multiple links on there. Um, versus awesome. always changing it out. Good stuff. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, you want to move on? What's, what's in the, some other bull, I got, I got a few questions, uh, you know, yeah. for just rattling my mind, right. You know, you, you know, you've spent plenty of time on the different, you know, the different platforms you start at Facebook, you know, it's, it can be overwhelming, right? So like, what's the, what's the one question, um, you know, like, where do we start? Like what, like if you said somebody was just getting in, it's like, you know, Hey, just go all in, know, know this platform first. What would you say? Um, I would probably say Facebook. Facebook would be first um, because the generations are, millennials don't really spend much time on Facebook, but the pool of your buyers, you don't really want millennials anyway. No offense to the millennials. <laughs> if you want to keep it a little bit higher and, and you're more solid of a buyer, you're probably talking to somebody in their mid 30s and 40s. Um, so if that's what you want to target, they are definitely on Facebook. So I would do that. But before you do any of that, I would want to make sure that if you decide that your name is John Kitchens, then you go on all of the platforms and you make sure that that, got, that John Kitchens is available. It's all the same. It's all the same. So that is the most important is decide what your name is going to be, how you're going to run business. And then you're going to go on GoDaddy and you're going to buy johnkitchens.com. 
and then you're going to go on Facebook and you're going to create a Facebook page for John Kitchens Real Estate. And then you're going to go on Instagram and you're going to create a John's Kitchens Real Estate. And then you're going to go on LinkedIn and you're going to create your profile as John Kitchens. So you just want to make sure that everything, that every platform that eventually, even if you're not going to end up start using them all at the same time, but that your brand is going to be able to function on all of those sites when you decide to do so. Yeah, so you want your name first. Like I own a lot of versions of my name in the dot com. Right. Because you want to. Because if you don't, then somebody is going to and sell it to you one day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Buy your kids' domains too. If you have, if you if you guys haven't bought your kids' names, their domains yet, go buy them. Yeah. Um, Christina is asking a question on on Instagram. Until you are at that point to where you have enough followers to where you can do the swipe up, what do you what do you recommend there on on Instagram to be able to leverage? The link tree, definitely link tree. And then also, I created Gogo's Bootcamp with all of these vendors that I've used through the years and all of the different systems and apps and editing these apps and all that because I was constantly repeating myself and I love this subject. And I created, to be honest with you, is to multiply myself with the whole EXP thing. Now my team being at 43, they all get it for free. Um, I don't want to have to repeat myself all the time, but it is open for the general public. So if they go to gogosbootcamp.com, they can go through that. The very first season is social media. The reason I'm mentioning is is because you cannot grow organically. I mean, you can, but it's going to take a very long time, especially when you create a page. Is because the reason Instagram wants you to have a page is because they want you to advertise. So if you don't advertise like myself, so you don't give Instagram or Facebook money, yeah. then Instagram and Facebook will limit your traffic, so sad. So believe it or not, they only allow it. 2% of your organic followers will actually see your post, which means you have 100 followers Two, you know, when you're swiping and you see it in your feed, two people out of the 100 actually going to see that. Right. And that doesn't mean they're going to click it or comment or like, but it, at least it shows up in their thing. So only 2%. So for you to be able to grow and make sure that many, many people see your profile, they can even find you, you can advertise or you can use some of the outside services that I've been using through the years to help that grow organically. So I have two companies that help me now. They're both very, very affordable. Um, one of them is Dallas. Um, the guy's name is Dallas. He is in California. So what he does is um, his company just kind of runs it in the background. They follow, they unfollow kind of scenario. And then anybody I personally follow. So if I think you're interesting and I follow your account, if I manually clicked it through my account, they cannot unfollow you. Um, but the system, if they followed and unfollowed, it will unfollow. You know what I mean? Um, so that will help your growth tremendously. I usually grow anywhere between 1,500 to 2,000 a month. Um, and you also want to keep it organic because you don't want Instagram to flag your account. You know I mean? You can't go haywire and buy 10,000 followers and then Instagram goes, uh oh, you just bought followers and they shut your account down. Right. So it's, yeah, I don't recommend doing it that way, but organically and grow growing slowly, but faster than what you could do on your own. I totally recommend these accounts. And, um, and in that Google's Bootcamp in the first series, you get links to everything and everybody gets a discounted price and they also get my nationwide pricing, which I pay less because I refer so much. Um, the second company I use, they are in Canada. Um, that what's called Power Likes. Um, Power Likes works a little bit differently. They have multiple accounts that have uh, followers over a million and or in in the millions and what happens is the algorithm on instagram the way it works is that the algorithm is going to look at oh if this account that has millions and millions of followers took the time to comment on yours or took the time to like yours then this must be interesting and if this is interesting then i'm going to show it to more people so that's how power likes works so i do pay a service with this company and then everybody who decides to work with them they get 10 percent off as well um it's totally worth it your correspondence is going to go up uh, way high you get a lot of comments and you of course have to comment back because the algorithm looks at it as traffic and that's what you want so your account then shows up higher than anybody else's um so i know this is a lot of information but just start one at a time when you create your page and you also create an Instagram page, as long as you created both with, it, with the same email address, you can link them. So I don't manually go and post on Facebook and then I post on Instagram and then I post on LinkedIn. I post one time, I usually through, do it through Instagram and it automatically it asks you when you link your accounts, you also want to post this to Facebook. And you just click a button, say yes, and it just shoots it over to Facebook. 
So yes. it saves your it saves your work time. You know, you do it once and get two things done. LinkedIn is different. LinkedIn, you can't link it um, to the other platforms. They don't owned by one another. Instagram and Facebook are owned. Um, by one so LinkedIn, you just have to make a conscious effort and, and copy and paste the same thing you post it. It takes two minutes. I usually type up everything on Instagram. I copy, always copy before you post because if you did one extra hashtag, so you can only have 30. If you end up putting 31 hashtag, your whole blah, 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 you just typed up is going to go poof. You're going to have to type it again. So before I hit send as in post, I usually copy, but for many reasons, you copy that because you're going to just use that again on, link, on LinkedIn. So then I take the flag, go on LinkedIn. I have all the apps on my phone. I do everything from this cute little device right here. And then I just go on LinkedIn, take the same photo, post it, link, blah, 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 post done. You can use hashtags, all that on LinkedIn as well. LinkedIn now works amazing. I think LinkedIn is also trying to get advertising money. So they will allow you to, like some of my videos on LinkedIn are in the 150,000 views a regular video like same video on instagram maybe got five thousand the same yeah. video on facebook got 800 you know what i mean so you'll see how the different platform works so i think right now linkedin you should use it and abuse it and you can post the link so you can post your newest listing on there but also make sure that you are in most of your advertising not just the next time because you're gonna lose them great great point i mean yeah. you know you have to you have to think of it as if um, you know, you're shooting your own TV commercials, right? Your own, if you, if you take that, if you take that approach, I think that kind of helps everybody mentally, um, to, to kind of get their head around it. Right. It's, I mean, you're shooting your own TV commercials. I, I mean, are your brand. we ran, we ran TV in, in Lawton, Oklahoma. And I, I mean, in Lawton, Oklahoma, and it cost us a, an arm and a leg. And, um, I mean, you could do it for free and, um, you could do it all from your, all from your, from your uh, and it's thousands and thousands of people. I mean, if you look at the car uh, manufacturers, they're going away from TV advertising. Everybody is. Everybody's going away from TV. I don't even have cable. <laughs> I mean, I literally, I don't have cable. <laughs> I haven't had cable in like a year and a half now. Most of the time, I don't know what's going on in the real world. Um, because I like to keep it positive. I live in a cute little bubble, pink and fluffy and, and furry. And I like to keep it that way. And I realize news is just kind of brings you down. I don't need to know what's going on in nope. the other end the world um it doesn't affect my day and i i, I don't want to sound harsh by any means of course i care about people but if you think about it back in the day in our grandparents' age these countries are still existed all these issues existed they had different issues um but you can't fix it i mean everybody has to fight their own fight and just knowing that the need is out there or, or something is out there it just brings you down and i don't i just don't need to know that it's plenty right. to of my own life and 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 hopefully everybody can can do the same for themselves yeah absolutely i mean it's it's critical what we were what we're putting in our in our minds is no different than you know the nutrition and the food that we take to put in our bodies it's the it's the same thing so be 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 cautious of that yeah. what would be some content ideas um that you would you know highly recommend and like you said you, you i mean you do one and it's the same for for all three platforms but what are some like cons in, in I want to emphasize this word because you said it right from right from go on the first of this call and you've said it a couple times and you've said stay consistent but just consistent like you know I mean anything I mean so so many times I get this question well I'm new and I don't have anything going on and what do you post about when you don't have anything going on I don't even have a listing never had one you know what I mean it's you post the hustle like when I started out early I literally posted of like what it takes like Okay, I'm going on a home inspection and what, 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 do you, what do you do at a home inspection? You know what I mean? Like I wanted them to see the growth. I wanted them to see what it takes to be a realtor. I wanted them to see, of course, the hustle. That's why you're constantly posting. It's because you want to stay top of mind. They're not going to look at every single post you make. But when, when they do this and they see, oh, Gogo posted again. Oh, Gogo's working. Oh, Gogo's hustling. Oh, Gogo's a realtor. That's all I need them to know. I don't even care if they click it or if they read it. I just want that constant reminder that I'm a realtor. So if and when they need one, they know exactly who to call. So post about anything, post about what's going on, post about what you learned today, post about that. Did you know that Hamburg Township was voted for the sixth year in the row, the, the safe, six year in a row, I think it's how they say, the safest county um, in, or the safest town in Michigan, like that kind of stuff, like whatever is going on in your, little community or whatever you just learned about real estate like sometimes i'm like do you even know what post-closing occupancy is 
And right. then a cute little video about post-closing occupancy. Most people still think today that you have to have 20% down to buy a house. Then right. you can see a quick little video and like, oh, no, 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 no. If you're a veteran, thank you so much for serving. You can buy for 0% down. In our area, you can buy homes for 0% down on rural development loan. Or you can do 3% or 3.5%. You don't even have to have 5 You right. know what I mean? So that kind of videos of whatever you learned that day, teach the public. Educate. They don't know. Education, educate, educate, educate. Love it. Are you doing anything? Um, Yolita is asking, are you, are you pushing anything to YouTube, doing any videos and getting everything over to a YouTube channel? No. Nope. I mean, I have some videos up there, but it does take a lot of time to upload videos and then create the content and then respond. And then you have to have followers and they have to have a YouTube account in order to follow you. Most people just cruise YouTube. You know what I mean? So I do not, I have some videos up there. I, I try to like consciously remember when we create like, especially of our high end listings and stuff like that to post those on there. Uh, if I'm teaching something or it was a big hit on Instagram or whatever to post it on there. But to be honest with you, I have not in a, in a while, but YouTube is great. Um, I just don't think people use it like they do for, for example, Instagram because they feed it right to you. You know what I mean? Facebook and Instagram will put it right into your feed. Where on YouTube, they would have to actually sign up to be reminded when you posted something or to search you, which right. you have to be like Tony Robbins where people are like, I want to see if Tony Robbins posted something new. You know what I mean? So I don't, I don't use YouTube as, as, as much as I... Her strategy. I love it. No, it, uh, it makes sense. And, and um, with your, with your boot camp, I think, I think that's just a... Um, just a great idea. And I think that's a good takeaway for, for anybody that's, that's tuning in. And if you have something that you talk about a lot over and over the same thing, right? It could be a value, a value add, a specific training, the way you do something, create a module, create a course for it, give it away, leverage, leverage for your, for your people to access I mean, it's the same principle with Jay and Michael given the Honey Badger Nation digital access to CHSA, CHBA. It's the yeah. same thing. Well, that's the right? same thing. It's not free for the general public. It is $49 right. per, per series for the general public, but they still get all the links, all my pricing and preferred pricing and all the access to the vendors that I've worked with and I worked for years. So you're not working with right. this people. Um, but it is free to everybody that names me as their sponsor at EXP and then also free to my whole downline. So it's not just the ones that I bring. Everybody they bring, they can use it as leverage of like, hey, I can give you Gogo's Bootcamp for free. I can do this. I can enter you into the Honey Badger's group I can you can be part of team Google like that kind of stuff like in my opinion you have to be able the whole exp model is all shits and giggles excuse my French but I don't make money if you don't make money so I need yeah. to do my part of due diligence and make sure that you are set up for success if I ever want to see a revenue share check and that's why I created it is because it's all good to sign them up and be proud of like oh I signed you up and now you're my downline but if I don't help you to grow and if I don't help you to close I'm never going to see money so those 40 some agents that are under me is pointless and because this is how I built my business of course I want to teach it. Like this is freaking free advertising. Everybody should be doing it. Right. If I can do it with an accent and not being from here and not having a sphere of influence and, and you know, I don't have college education. I don't have marketing. I didn't have marketing budget. You know I mean? If I can do it, anybody can do it, especially the ones that have been in the business the longer than I've been alive. I, it blows my mind how they don't use it and abuse it. And the one question that you asked of like, what do, when do I repeat myself? Let me tell you this one. Oh, I don't like the way I look. And I don't like the way it sounds. And I, seriously, you yeah. don't think that the people that know you know what the freak you look like or know what you sound exactly. like. Exactly, exactly. Get over they, all know, they all know what you look like and they all know <laughs> what you sound like and they all know you have an accent. Yep. You know what I mean? So just get over it, create the video, post it, and people are going to like you for who you are. They're already, like they're already your friend on Facebook. So they're just going to follow you and see what you do in business. And you are your business. So again, just get over the, I don't like myself on video and just, it's going to take a, Oh, don't get me wrong. I used to shoot videos like 20 times before I was like, a post, I think this is the right <laughs> and just post. you know, it's going to take a while to feel comfortable. Yeah. I remember the first time I shot my official, I used to have a, an ad at the movie theater. And I remember the first time we shot that, it took me like 70 tries of the camera I'm going cut. I had the worst migraine when I got home because I was so nervous. 
And now, oh my gosh, I don't care what I look like anymore. (laughs) This is going on, send. I don't even know if I like, most of the time I realize Instagram cut off half of it. So there was no moral to the story. (laughs) Like, oh, I didn't realize that the second half of the story didn't get posted. (laughs) Just get over that, create your own brand and run with it. Like run to the bank. You know, we're, we're coming up on uh, the top of the hour. I just want to make sure that, uh, you know, if you had any other key bullet points that you wanted to, to make sure that everybody takes away from, from this call, um, just give, give you a, a few minutes here to kind of emphasize any, any key things. I don't know. I mean, I guess if I stop and think, I could be doing much, much better myself personally if I cold called. I could be maybe doing much better if I door knocked in neighborhoods. I might, my goal is not to, for, I don't work a day in my life, I guess is the point of the story. I enjoy what I do, so I don't work. So if I can teach people, and social media might not be for everybody, it might not be for you. You know what I mean? Whatever it is that it's for you, if you look at back at your five past transaction and you draw the conclusion that they came your, from your sphere of influence, then maybe what you should do is to make sure that you invite them out for lunch on their birthday. Make sure you send them a cute little card. Make sure you send them a gift. Make sure you, you get a basketball ticket to your local team and invite them to go with you, that you have that face-to-face. You need to nurture them. You need to babysit them. So if social media is not the one for them, just find the one that it is for you so then you love it so much that you don't have to work a day in your life. Of course, for me, it's social media. So I want to teach everybody to feel comfortable in front of the camera, to, to feel comfortable of, of becoming your own brand and talking about what you do for a living and what it takes. Because that's I- my big- that's what feeds my, my family. And I wish I could just make everybody do that. But I understand it might not be for everybody. You couldn't teach me how to cold call because I don't want to know. It gives me the weebie-jeebies I don't want to know. But if right. there's a little part in your existence that feels like I should figure out social media, I would love to help. That's awesome. So um, how long did it take before you really started kind of getting some, some traction and, and really starting to see results from, you know, the efforts that you were putting into social media? Yeah, so it's, as I said, I always only ran business on social media. So all my business ever came from social media. So in the first year, I made again, $16,000. The second year, 36 or 37, something like that. My third year was 79, I think. And then it just went on and on. As you can see, I pretty much doubled my business every year. So that's how I measure it. It's not going, you're not going to be an overnight success. It doesn't happen that we have to have years and years and months and months worth of content out there before people realize like, Oh, what is that chick's name? It's, it's like a, a Gigi or Jojo. It's a, oh, it's Gogo. You know what I mean? So you, it's going to take a while before your name becomes a brand. So it's not going to be an overnight success, but just keep with it. Just like with anything else that you've been doing, keep with it. And eventually you are your brand and you can do it for free. And then hopefully you you can at least constantly double your income. But I don't, I did not double last year. Last year, I actually made a tiny bit less than the year before in the real estate transaction portion of my career. But now I have 12 different ways of income. You know what I mean? Right. So now I made money on Amazon and I made money on the real estate school and I made money on uh, a title share and I made money in revenue share. I made money on profit share for, from KW and I made money, on, you know what I mean? So it's like, there's many, many, many ways how most of my accounts, most of the things that I use and even on the transaction base of it um, are almost free because I refer so much because of social media that my account with those services are technically free. And after it's free, if I refer even more than I actually make money, I make a percentage of those referrals. So it's um, even Tony Robbins says the average, the average millionaire has six to seven different ways of income for which they do not give their time in return. Right. Because eventually there's only one of you and there's only 24 hours. So eventually you're going to run out of me or you're going to run out of time in order to grow. You would have to multiply yourself or you would have to multiply time, which this one is impossible. And this one is maybe doable, but I know nobody's as crazy as me. So uh, growing my team that way, I tried it twice where I was trying to train them. And as I said, I'm an asshole in business. And I make people cry and they go to the hills and they would quit after six months. So 
that route is not for me. And this EXP route is much, much, much better. Even though I'm growing a team, I'm growing it nationwide. Everybody's running their own businesses. So I don't have to babysit them. I am available for them for whatever their needs are. If I hold the answer to it, I'm free anytime they can call or text. So it's just different. Right. Absolutely. Um, are you, are you using anything? Joyce is asking, are you using anything to schedule any posts or almost all of your posts just on the spot? On the spot. Gut. Good old gut feeling. I'm like, ooh, I think I need to talk about this today. Talk about that. Yeah. I do keep a little bit of a, a synergy or whatever that's called. So if I'm in a red dress, I'm not going to post something in a yellow. Right. Or blue. Or something that would like the contrast would be totally off. So I would try to keep it within like the same color scheme. Um, for at least three, four, three to six photos, because that's what you're going to see on the actual screen um, all at once. But other than that, it's just pretty much whatever I feel like. Gotcha. I love it. Is there like, do you have like try to post two, three times a day or is it just? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. So again, you want to stay top of mind. They're not going to read every single post you make. You're, they're not going to maybe even give it the time of the day. Um, but you just want when they're doing this with one eye closed in bed at night. They want to see your name, your brand. They want to see that you're hustling. They want to see that you just listed a new house, even though they could care less, but they're not on the market for a house. Right, right. Top of mind. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Kelly's asking, um, are you traveling out to Southern California anytime soon to do any of your boot camps? I actually had California, LA scheduled for May 17 and 18, um, tentatively. And because I keep all my classes for free, so I don't charge the general public, they come to my classes for free. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize I'm gonna run into this issue until we did Orlando and I sold out Orlando, the room was 40 seats and I sold it out in two and a half hours. And then when I called the title company to tell them that, oh, we sold out, they are like, well, there's another 20 some people that I personally invited that are not on the list. So then I had to do two events. And I realized learning that, then I'm not good at doing two events because I can't remember if I already said this or if I said it at the first class, then maybe I'm making the same joke again or if I didn't cover it, then it's even bigger mistake. So I realized I need a big room. With the big room, the issue is that they're going to want to charge you. And I don't want to charge my people. So especially when I go into areas and I don't have a relationship with the title company or I don't have a relationship with a lender, it's hard to figure out and they also if you don't know them I might not want to touch my name to them especially if they're not doing good business then you have to research them and yada yada so in California I was scheduled for 17 and 18 in LA and then Brent go sent me that personal invite to the one in Vegas and of course it's 17 18 and 19 in Vegas so I decided to go to Vegas gotta go to Vegas yeah go to Vegas. are you gonna be there um it's up in the air we'll see yeah. <laughs> So I think I'm going to, I haven't booked anything yet, but I haven't responded to Brent yet because I wasn't sure if I can move it around, but um, I think I'm going to move it around and try to find a place in somewhere around LA or San Diego area um, that can hold about 60 people or so awesome. um, and do it later in, later in like June or something. I am going to Atlanta in June, so maybe July. Fascinating. So uh, appreciate you taking the time, jumping on, being a true expert mentor, sharing uh, your knowledge with everybody, the Honey Badger Nation. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. If they need to get a hold of you, best way? Uh, GoGo's Real Estate. Everywhere. everywhere. Yep. everywhere. Go -Go's, or GoGo Batki on LinkedIn, but GoGo's Real Estate everywhere. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully you guys found uh, tons and tons of value. Make sure when we get this reposted, you guys give GoGo -Go lots of love and um, sharing of your big takeaways. We really appreciate it. GoGo, -Go, thank you. Use, thank you. And please use your KV Core links, your own website links. Use it and abuse it. That's where if you ever posting a house, that should be the only link you use is your own site. So you can generate the traffic right back into your CRM program and become your own Zillow. I love this it. should be the best take you take as an EXP agent. Like, awesome. oh, oh, this is what I was trying to tell you. Every Monday, this is a good tip. Yes. So that every Monday we post the links from my KV core. All of these links are from my KV core. Monday we do my listing. So we feature one of my listings on every Monday. Every okay. Tuesday 
Mm -hmm. We feature on other listings. Anybody, it's it's a gorgeous home or it's a great find or it's a fixer upper or a good investment opportunity somewhere around here where my agents can then work it because that's the whole point. The reason why you're doing it is so then you can get those potential buyers. Um, Every Wednesday is just kind of open. Sometimes we post about uh, some local, like I told you, Hamburg Township was voted the sixth time, the safest um, township in Michigan, that kind of stuff. Like just something about the local market. Um, Every Thursday we do open houses. Um, So your KV core, there's an actual icon on your page that you can add to your page that says these are the open houses this weekend. All you need to do is click that when you go to the HTTP dot, you copy that and paste it. And then every, and you will say, Hey, these are the open houses this weekend in Oakland County. If you don't represent, if you don't have representation, I would love to be your agent and just post it when they click it. In order for them to see the whole list, they would actually have to put in their email address. Then you know at least their name and email address because everybody who's on social media have to have a name and an email address. So at least you have that much. So there is your potential buyer because if they're looking at open houses, the chances are that they're looking for a new home are pretty big. Mm-hmm. So that's Absolutely. your way of grabbing them as buyers. And let's hope that they have to sell before they buy. So then you grab them as sellers as well. So that's Thursdays. And then Fridays, we always do the how much your home is worth. So every Friday you go to your own website and you copy the link of how much your home is worth. And sometimes I do, you know, you want to change it up. That's the one fault of KV core. I don't like how much your home is worth link is always the same. It's a question mark in the middle of the picture. So if you've been posting that link over and over, over again, your people are going to get bored with it. So we had to figure out ways of changing up the image um, and what it pretty much says, how much your home is worth. So you can link that. And then of course, when they click that and you fill out because they have to actually give you their address. So the system automatically sends them the CMA, um, then you know everything about them, their name, their home address, everything. Then you follow up awesome. and that's all given to you by EXP. That's awesome. Great. Uh, great nuggets. Uh, definitely, uh, in the call with the bang with a bunch of takeaways. So absolutely. Uh, thank you again. Thank you guys for tuning in and, uh, make sure to, uh, Catch you guys uh, next week. Thank you guys for having me. Find me on GoGo's Real Estate everywhere. See ya.